Dutch, uh, you weren't canceled, but yet some things happened to you today. Tell us what happened on uh, Give Him 15. Well, we, we released a post about praying for our dams and waterways, water supply in America, because there have been quite a few prophetic words uh, dreams about that, that the terrorists are going to go after the, the water supply, the waterways to cut off our ability to transport, and of course, uh, you know, drinking water, and, and death and damage. If some of these uh, dams are destroyed like Hoover Dam, it would be catastrophic beyond belief. So we released a post just saying, let's pray for these waterways, just as we did when we painted the borders. Uh, we didn't name names. We didn't say it's coming. We didn't scare people, but but uh, Facebook decided they didn't. They didn't want to. They didn't want to post it. They they said no. We can't. We can't let that be released. We want people to feel safe, and so we we don't want to a post, I guess, about safety and people feeling safe, <laughs> because I, I I don't understand. But but it has started. Yeah. And uh, you know, all, all we were doing was say, let's pray for safety. And right, I guess that right. scares people when we pray for safety and say, hey, terrorism might happen, so let's not let it happen. But, you know, I, you know, when Lance mentioned that scripture, 1 Corinthians 16, 9, my heart leaped because I wrote about that today for tomorrow's post, that very verse. There are a great door of opportunity, but there are also many adversaries. And you'll right. be glad to know, I think you will, that I actually, tomorrow's post is taken from your book that you just uh, promoted on your oh, show you. yeah. uh, 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 because I just felt to go in that direction. And I use that very verse of scripture. There are many, uh, there's much opposition, but we can't get distracted by the opposition. Right. We have to keep our focus on the opportunities. And that's what oh, Paul that's was good. saying there. Look, you know, and, and that's what we're going to do. We're not going to be detracted. We're going to be like Caleb. We don't care how big the giants are. We can take the land. And we will. So we need to be ready for this because it's yeah. coming. They're going to try to shut us down, turn us off, silence us. We're just not going to allow it. Uh, we're going to find a way, and God's going to find a way, and we're going to get this done. Amen. Amen. We're going to get it done. All right, Lance, I'll give you a chance to comment before I go to Hank. Now, we're going to, don't forget the water mm -hmm. thing because we're going to come back to Dutch because there's a prophetic word. There's a, there's a thread in here. We're going to come back to that, but I want to give... Lance in the library, a chance to talk. Go ahead, Lance. <laughs> no, I think that when, as we're transitioning into the discussion of the prophetic, the prophetic has taken a real beating yeah. uh, since, uh, and I want everyone to understand something. This, this time, the church may have been in the background. This time, the church is on the front lines, That's good. and they are trying desperately to suppress Christian engagement. They've made a full court decision that they're going to go after Christian nationalism. That's the Rob Reiner movies. That's going to be the, the hit pieces that are going to come out of Rolling Stone. They have a dedicated journalist watching this show in order to go after everything we say. That tells me that the devil takes the church seriously That's right. because the church is the only variable yeah. that hell can't calculate on how it's going to impact things. This is the year the church shows up. Wow, I love that. I love it. You're right. The devil takes the church seriously. Now, I want you to pay close attention as I go to Pastor Hank here, because this is what happened. This, uh, this particular prophetic word was back September 14th, um, right there at Open the Heavens, and there was a certain word that came. So let's overlay where we are right now. 47 states uh, this weekend went through an amazing freeze. You know, Texas is, uh, you know, we're in the single digits with the uh, wind chill in the negative digits, uh, which, you know, we don't do that well. Uh, but Pastor Hank, even last week, you guys were up there and you couldn't come on the show because of the uh, you couldn't get yeah. out because of the blizzard conditions. So walk us through real slowly, Pastor Hank, because okay. I want people to really get this, what okay. that word was. And then we'll dive into what happened with uh, Dutch. Go ahead. Uh, and, and these prophecies, thank you, uh, Pastor Gene. These prophecies are out at hankandbrenda.org. You can also go out to onevoicetv.net uh, where we have prophetic perspectives where we've done 
actually breaking down the prophecies. So, very quickly, you mentioned the prophetic. First and foremost, you have to understand that the prophetic, Elijah, Samuel, even Nathan the prophet, were commissioned by God in a time when the kingdom was under certain derision or there were certain uh, opponents coming against the kingdom. God always had the prophetic there to help speak to the nation, to the people, but also to the leaders to help bring them to a place of understanding of what God's agenda was. The other thing you see is in 1 Kings 18, verse 41, you see weather being used as an example of something that signifies a shift or a change. It's 1 Kings 18, 41. The prophet Elijah says, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. It had been three and a half years of famine, a harsh season. There was no prophetic evidence, physical evidence of what the prophet heard, but he heard changes coming. This is what these weather prophecies are signaling by God with the freeze, the snow, uh, the heavy wet snow that we just saw. God said that on September 14th of this year as well, is it signifies changes in the air. Why is that important? First Kings 18, go to verse 45. It says, then it happened. In other words, what the prophet heard, it took time for the servant to actually see the manifestation. That's been the problem since 2020. Prophets were hearing things other were echoing it. They never heard it. And, and others said, well, wait a minute. It didn't look like it was happening. And so uh, they discounted the prophetic or they uh, labeled certain ones as false or whatever. And, and yet we have to stay with it because the prophets were hearing the people, the servants had to wait and help pray it through like you see in 1 Kings 18, seven times he prayed, and then finally it happened. And that's what verse 45 says, it happened. Now watch though, when it happened, the Bible says the clouds or the sky was filled with darkness. That's the problem. People get their eyes on the darkness, but something was happening at the same time. The fulfillment of that prophetic word, it says, and there was great rain. In other words, the prophecy was fulfilled. Lastly, you see verse 46, Elijah, the prophet, outruns the chariot of Ahab. Eventually, the prophetic outran the political, and the political caught up to what Elijah had prophesied. Now, let's go to September 14th. September 15th, God prophesied, and he said, and I just want to just read a quick thing real fast. He said, do you think that somehow I've ignored the injustice, the corruption, the evil, the things that have been deep stated and seated? No, God says, I've watched, I've waited for this is my time now in the earth and it's my seasons and the seasons will blend together. And then they will say, what is this frigid cold? It is so cold. And why does it snow? And then God says, it'll be heavy, heavy, wet snow. And why in a place where we escape the frigid cold, we are freezing. God says it is to show that I am the God of times and seasons. And for a while, it'll seem backwards. And I am showing the earth that I am the one who is bringing my purpose at this time. Now you got to go back. Why does God use snow very quickly? Psalm 60, uh, what is it? Psalm 68 verse 14. It references that God dealt with wicked Kings. He dealt with political entities, spiritual entities when it was snowing in Zaman. And it was a sign of God coming now to bring justice, but also a sign that the Lord was intervening to shake things. And snow was a sign in the natural, just like the abundance of rain, that things were shifting towards the direction of what we've been praying, but what God desires to do. And uh, so I don't know if there's anything else. Yeah, Pastor I, Gene, all that right. You want so, me to share. so let me let me take this from that uh, number 25, guys, uh, the uh, right down there in red. But God says, I'll bring a rain that shall come and begin to be watered upon this nation again. All right. So we've got water, the heavy snow, the light. What? Uh, before I go to Dutch, Pastor Hank, what does this say to you then? You know, bring it, bring it to a, a head for me. Does this, okay. it's supposed, what does this yes. say? What should we take from this? Not, uh, uh, back okay. in September, you prophesied it. That's one thing, but that happened. What is it that we need to take from that? 
Two things. Number one is it's signifying God's agenda. Again, God's heart must be heard. That's what prophecy is about. He's saying, look, I've seen the harsh season, just like the famine in the days of Elijah, three and a half years. Man, it's almost been three and a half years. He's saying, look at the freeze. Look at what I will do. Even in that prophecy from September, he said, I'll freeze it in Atlanta and I'll freeze their efforts against 45. Do you know that God chose October 31st, Reformation Day, to send a freeze? to Atlanta, and that's what that prophecy right. said. So number one, it signifies change. It signifies God's hearing. It signifies things are about to shift in the direction of what we prayed. Second, it signifies that we need to pray because there is a warning there. And the warning is this, that the enemy also wants to counter. In the one prophecy, Pastor Gene, from September of this year, God said, watch the water. Dutch has a dream. He has an announcement. He gets censored. He gets canceled. Why the water? Well, God said in September 18th of 2021, they're going to go after our waterways. So the reason we have to do this is I'm going to give you one last scripture very quickly. Acts 12. James, the apostle, was beheaded at the hands of a political figure. And then the church sees Peter, one of their primary figures uh, get thrown in jail. Obvious outcome would probably be he's going to be beheaded. And the church did something. They prayed without ceasing. Their prayers shifted to a whole nother realm. And they did it constantly. They didn't just let things happen being stolen. They finally got in their prayer closets in Acts 12 and they prayed and said, no, you did it to James. You did it in 2020, but you're not doing it to President Trump. You're not doing it to this country now. We're going to keep praying. And you know what? Keep reading Acts 12. A political figure, an angel was sent as a result of their prayers and Herod was removed by the angel and God got involved in politics. And that's what these prophecies are trying to signal. Change Number one, number two, church, pray. Things are shifting, and when we do, God will involve himself with politics, and that which needs to be removed will, and that which needs to be brought forth shall happen. And these things are a sign, even in Iowa, a freeze, and yet there's a triumphant victory of mm -hmm. one, right. 45, the wrecking ball. Yeah, all right. So, so the point I want you, everybody to get from what Pastor Hank just said is that you have a part to do. We have a responsibility uh, it's really easy to sit back and just judge a prophetic word because you, what you think. Uh, no, you've got a, you've got skin in this game, so you need to have it. All right, I don't want to take you more time. I want to go to Dutch. Dutch, tell us the dream, and then what happened after that with this prophetic word. You know, I'll start by saying how exciting it is, Gene, to, to because the church for so long we, we were we were having to react, react, react. But watchmen are supposed to be watching for the enemy and know when he's coming, what he's doing. And it's encouraging to me that the prophetic has reached a level where we're, we're hearing these things, these warnings uh, in, in advance. And this particular one was actually given in late November, this dream. But when it was sent to me, actually by the same lady who had the dream about painting the borders and, and anchoring the nation, Gina Goldston. But, you know, always take these dreams, pray over them, consult with other people, ask the Lord for his timing, etc. And I sat on this for several weeks, but then I began to feel this urgency. Now is the time to release this. And I found out since that several prophets, as Hank was talking about, several have had warnings about the water the dams, the waterways, etc. But in this particular dream, 50 people found themselves in a military strategy room. They had been summoned there, one from each state, and Gina in the dream was one of them. I was one of them. And we were all gathered, and then a general and an admiral came into the room and said, we have asked you to come because we need your help. There was a, there was a map of all 50 states uh, on the wall, the, on all the walls, uh, and the dams and waterways were highlighted. And they said, we need your help because there are some things that we just don't have any control over, and you're going to have to help us do that. And they said, we need you to pray for the waterways and dams. And then they said, two specific things we need for you to pray regarding the dams. And they said, first of all, Pray diligently against domestic and foreign terrorist attacks. And then secondly, they said, pray diligently against any attempt to intentionally restrict the water flow 
in an effort to restrict and hinder the supply lines in America. So there are other reasons they're going to attack these dams and waterways. But And this was somewhat interesting to me. It said, but one of the primary reasons is they want to restrict supply lines, things that are moved from here to there by way of water. So that would also include ports. And so uh, this warning came very, very strong in the dream. Then we sat down as representatives, wrote out prayers and decrees, and then we were sent back to our states. And the next part of the dream, there were strategy rooms in all of the states. Each state had a, a strategy room, had a map up of the state with all the dams and all the waterways. And people were coming in, and there was great strategy, and they were all sent to specific places to pray for God's protection, taking the prayers and decrees that uh, that we had written for them. Uh, and all the nation, people in every state were making these same decrees. So there was this unified agreement all throughout the nation. Then they were all encouraged to also pray as they were led. Well, we released this today. People can look at today's post and see this, and they can also find these prayers and decrees that we have written uh, by going to dutchsheets.org or giving15.com. They are posted there. So we're going to see the nation covered and protected. And uh, we're, Amen. you know, the, I don't know why we, this, the, the, someone didn't want to release this today. I think they backed off. But all we were doing was saying, pray that this doesn't happen. Amen. So. That's good. Good. All right, Lance. Uh, I got like a minute and a half. <laughs> so it's always give Lance the impossible and do it in a minute and a half. Uh, you know, you heard these both these men. You know, the prophetic word and the dream. How? Do, what do you get from that? How tie it all together for us? Hmm. Well, I believe that the thing that I'm loving is, and it happens here in the program. When God brings together His brethren in the brethren in unity and humility. There's an increase in the collective ear to hear. It used to be that, you know, prophets might compete to see who could get the word. There's something apostolically maturing, I think, in the leadership of the body where we're really wanting to win as a team, as, uh, uh, more so than individually. And this time, because we're coming together as one, is a force-multiplying anointing, which means the confirmation of many voices is going to help us have even more accuracy. When I was up in January 6th, I was upset when it happened because I could see that Trump didn't have the voices that needed to be there speaking in proximity to him. That will not happen this time. I'm seeing a repositioning in a sense of how God's moving things around. We are occupying a whole different seat than we ever had before. I read The Economist and Dutch Sheets. I read into Dutch being criticized in The Economist of all things. Our names are actually now in the spirit realm showing up on dossiers because the devil knows we're moving forward. Amen. I hope you, everyone's watching at home. That should be encouraging. It ought to light you up, man. This is what we're seeing. God is on the move. Listen, we, gotta, we have our part to play. We need to pray these things through. We need to stay engaged. We need to understand what's happening. Uh, all right, so what we're going to do, I'm calling an audible right here, so Jason will make sure this happens. We're going to take this piece of what you had of both of those, uh, of, of Lance and what Hank said and what uh, Dutch said, and we're going to pull that clip and we'll post it out to Rumble so that you can take that and share that. So you need to listen to that again because they went fast because of time. So you need to listen to that again and listen to it again and then share it with all your friends and your people that understand. And they want to understand this whole thing about the prophetic. This is what we have to lean into. We're not shying away. We're going strong. We're leaving it all on the field. Uh, insert whatever phrase you want to do. But we're not giving up and we're not backing down. Why? Because we're here to rescue America.